Greetings everyone. We are going to talk about sound and buzzers, buzzers and speakers. Sound is a topic near and dear to my heart. So quick refresher from basic science. Sound is created through vibrations in the air. So sound waves is moving back and forth. We answer our eardrum, it vibrates. We are able to sense um, generally the amplitude or the volume and then the frequency, which is the pitch. So how we're going to produce sound uh, with our argon is with a piezo buzzer. And so this is a very, very simple kind of speaker. It basically uses a magnetic coil to vibrate a tiny disc and that disc then produces a sound, okay? And so we control the pitch with a form of um, pulse width modulation, which we're familiar with. So these buzzers are simple, they're cheap, they're easy to use, they're great for um, alarms, games, single notes. What they're not great for is they're not great for high quality sound. You don't want these for speakers, you don't want these for earbuds. Just to give you a quick example, human hearing is generally going to be can perceived as about 20 hertz or 20 cycles to about 20,000 cycles. And this device can produce up to about 2,000 hertz. Now I could do a little bit more, but that's where it's good. So it's going to be kind of a um, low quality sound, but nevertheless, it'll work. And it also produces sound through square waves, right? Pulse width modulation is going to be like this, or kind of like that. So it's going to be a little bit of a, a buzzy sound. It's not going to look kind of like a smooth sound wave like you might be used to. Okay. So it's, it's very useful, but just realize that this guy has limitations. So how we connect it is really simple. There's a red and a black line on the uh, buzzer and the black line is going to go to ground. Okay. The red line, which is kind of our power is going to go to an digital input. Now these buzzers are polarized. So look for this symbol, right? Either the plus on the bottom or the plus on the side. Otherwise it won't work properly. Okay. So make sure that the plus goes to the argon and the power of the ground goes to um, ground. Okay. So to produce a tone, very simple. You use the tone command, right? You simply say tone, the pin you want to reference, the frequency you want to produce the sound at, and then how long in milliseconds you would like to produce the sound. Okay. Um, and let's example like this. So if I want to produce a sound D on pin D6, that's where I have my buzzer connected. I want 500 Hertz and I want to play for one second. That's going to produce a low 500 Hertz sound for one second. You can see these other examples. Okay. Um, this doesn't always work as you would expect, but in theory you could say zero and it would just keep producing the sound. It doesn't always work the way you want it to, unfortunately. A quick note about tone. This is important. Tone requires pulse with modulation. Now, the argon has a lot of pins. You can see here it has 12 pins, right? 12 pins that can produce pulse with modulation. The only catch is that they're actually in three groups. And so what that means is, yes, you can produce a pulse with modulation value on pin D4 and D5, D6 and D8 at the same time. But because they're in the same group, it's going to be the same pulse width modulation value. Okay. So just keep that in mind. If you have different pins um, connected, they, they'll produce the same uh, variance, which might not be what you want. Um, sometimes if you have a loop going or something and you need to stop a tone, you need to stop it from playing, you can say stop tone. And then the pin number, fairly straightforward. Um, now, if you want to represent musical notes, we can do that too. And what we commonly are going to do is if you want musical notes, um, we might represent them as constants. So to give you an example of what that would look like, this is a way that we often define constants if we want a melody. So if you are familiar with music, um, then you would know, for example, right, I've got my different notes. I've got my B, I've got my C, I've got my C sharp, D, whatever. And so as I keep going, these numbers here are defining the frequency that you want to produce. So this is a useful trick. If you want to make a melody, right, if you, and you find it online or you're familiar with different songs, 
and you want um, you have C and you want a major third, you want to go to an E, right? You, you might not know what the frequencies are to go from C to E, but you can look and you can see, oh, here is my C, right? And I want to go to an E like that. So you don't have to worry about the frequencies, you just use the constants. And so I'll provide this file in case that's something you want to do and we, we do have an assignment where we get to use it. Um, optionally, uh, the argon can't control the volume. So the pulse width modulation is only going to define the amplitude, the loudness. And so if you want to control the volume, if that's something you want to be able to do, we have to wire it a little bit differently. So we add in this potentiometer, right? We can see it's just slightly different. It's basically, um, it's set up so that we have power, right? The power comes in and it's going to go to the digital input, but then the ground is connected to one of the legs of the potentiometer and the other middle leg is connected to ground. And as you turn the knob, the amplitude will get louder, and as you turn the knob other way, it'll get quieter, okay? And so this is what you can use if you want to add a volume control to your device. Um, basically what's happening, it's a current limiting resistor, which we're familiar with, and that's how we control the value.